The United Methodist Church has announced that dissenters within its organization have just ordained an openly homosexual bishop to its ranks. If this isn't a sign of the increasing apostasy, then I do not know what else can serve as a vivid example of the desertion from the Christian ranks. As mainline Protestant churches, such as Presbyterian and Methodist organizations, continue to allow and endorse what the Bible strictly prohibits, and evangelical churches, Southern Baptist, Independents, etc., continue to remain silent on controversial social issues, the more sinners will demand that true Christianity conform itself to secular norms. Because many churches and their congregants have chosen to ignore the truth of Scripture, what has increased in popularity is the specious view that man can impose his sinful views on the sacred text. Sinners were already looking for an excuse to superficially depose biblical truth. Now that a great number of churches have done so for them, they think that their godless notions are somehow legitimized. The reasons for such an undermining from within the church rank and file aren't as clear to many on the outside. However, for those on the inside and are familiar with sound doctrine, it couldn't be more obvious. Firstly, many pastors have cowered and succumbed to the fear of economic loss. They see that certain topics in society are contentious and could result in charitable congregants leaving the church over the pastor's and church's stance on those issues. As a result, they prefer to desist from teaching on and talking about things like homosexuality, abortion, and politics from a Christian perspective. Secondly is diminishing church attendance. While many are leaving the pews because they reject the traditional gospel, Due to its denouncement of and non-compliance against the secularism of the age, which includes an endorsement of sexual libertinism and glorification of greed, many in the hierarchy have softened their stance against sin in the name of appealing to those disenchanted with the church. The tactic is known as keeping butts in the seats. Thirdly, a faction of swindlers have taken to build churches based on avarice, The listener will know them and their anti-biblical doctrine by the name Prosperity Gospel. These deniers of the gospel and of Christ have corrupted the good news into a Norman Vincent Peleon methodology for obtaining riches. The individuals attending said churches gladly leave their money each week on the offering plates, thinking that they have just bought out God's hand and are supposing him to become their riches-granting genie. The leaders of said movement will never comment on contentious issues either, because they wish not to upset the filling of their pockets by the fooled masses whom are as covetous as they are. The reader will notice an overarching trend in all three cases. The dissemination of sound doctrine is suppressed, and such a suppression is demanded by many assisting church on a weekly basis. This is the group that Paul described to Timothy as the itching ears crowd, whom turn away from sound doctrine and heap up for themselves teachers according to their sinful lusts. 2 Timothy 4, verses 2 and 3. Thus, the departure away from the faith, once for all given to the saints, as said in Jude, verse 3, is being led by a massive group of people whom say they are Christ's disciples, but live like people whom reject his lordship. Due to this popular demand, many charlatans, are more than willing to become the gurus of these individuals' carnal version of Christianity and the Bible, a secular Christianity which endorses all manner of immorality and denies holiness. What is eventually discarded is the biblical concept of consecration. Quite a few pastors no longer teach their flock about the importance of submitting themselves to Christ and his doctrine, said things guiding us on how to live righteously. The handing over of one's will to the Savior is anathema to a society steeped in conceitedness. Due to the culture's desire to live as it pleases and not according to biblical principles, homosexuality and promiscuity are now considered scripturally acceptable. Avarice is suddenly blessed by God, Christian living and thought believed to be antiquated and worthy of scorn, and the biblical counsel fallible and needing secular-inspired revision. No matter the amount of empirical evidence and personal stories which prove the Bible has been right all along about the dire effects of sinful behavior, it isn't enough to convince the crowds with itching ears to live consecrated unto God. This is why, as Bible-believing Christians, 
It is imperative for us to continue to live and think biblically for the sake of those that will want to know what true Christianity is like. All of this, independent of what large numbers of supposed Christians or influential organizations and their leadership demonstrate, since they have already become compromised. In our quest to stay faithful to the one who rescued us, we must remember that the pressures to acquiesce to sinful dogma by secularists is a part of the Christian experience. Jesus warned us about such a persecution so as to prepare us to resist the temptation to compromise the truth for the sake of truth, our lives, and others. John 15, verses 18 through 19, and 1 John chapter 3, verse 13. It is because many haven't prepared themselves for said oppression that they have abandoned Christianity altogether. Matthew 13, verses 18 through 23. You, therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. And the things that you have heard from me among many witnesses, commit these to faithful men who will be able to teach others also. You, therefore, must endure hardship as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. No one engaged in warfare entangles himself with the affairs of this life that he may please him whom enlisted him as a soldier. And also, if anyone competes in athletics, he is not crowned unless he competes according to the rules. The hard-working farmer must be first to partake of the crops. Consider what I say, and may the Lord give you understanding in all things. The Apostle Paul, 2 Timothy chapter 2, verses 1-6. through 6.